Unfortunately, through my many years of ministry and conducting funerals, I've had too many funerals where the families were at odds with one another. And a lot of times when I've witnessed and experienced this, it was over the issue of the inheritance or possessions or something like that. I've seen funeral directors have to set up differing visitation times for the funeral so that family members don't cross paths. I've seen verbal arguments almost degenerate into physical fight. And even in my own family, when my grandmother died over a decade ago, we went through something similar. My aunt was out from Arizona and we wanted to clean out the house quickly and just kind of move on with our mourning and everything. There wasn't much of value and worth in the house, but there was already one family member, but you can guess who it was, who had already lawyered up and wanted to make sure he was going to get exactly what he wanted and exactly what he deserved. So we had to make an itemized list of every single item in my grandmother's house, right down to the most ridiculous rolls of toilet paper and paper towels. This dragged on for more than a year until we were finally able to liquidate our possessions and close out for life. These are the last things that people want to have to deal with when they're in the midst of mourning the loss of a loved one, in the midst of all the emotions that death brings. Yet these sentiments are exactly what Jesus was talking about in the Gospel lesson where he spoke these powerful words of warning. Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Now, money itself is not the problem. Money is another gift from God to help us live our lives, get what we need, take care of our loved ones, take care of ourselves. Money, when used in the right way, ways, can do incredible and wonderful things. We see these debates go on all the time among politicians. How are they best going to spend our tax dollars? And for all the ways, there is a lot of good that takes place between medical research and defense and building highways and, and helping other nations, all sorts of ways that money can do some good. And charitable giving. Americans are wonderful with charitable giving in, in, in the hopes of benefiting and helping others who are in need. And us as a church called St. Paul's, especially over the last few years, we've come to appreciate the blessing of being good stewards with the gifts that God has given to us. It's wonderful to crawl out of debt, to make things work in a way that's positive and build up the kingdom of heaven. And we know as the people of God that the more we give to the work of the Lord, the more God can carry forth his mission and ministry for us, for our well-being, and for those who are less fortunate. So it's not money that's the problem. It's our hearts and our attitudes. That was what was behind the warning that Jesus was given. That was what was behind the words of King Solomon in our Old Testament lesson from Ecclesiastes. He's lamenting the vanity of just pursuing worldly possessions as your whole purpose and the motivation behind everything you say and everything how it leads to nothing but, the word he used was emptiness. And picking up with that, Jesus gives these words of warning and then tells the story, the parable of this rich farmer who wants to build more and more farms to store up all those crops that are growing so abundantly. And not only is he encouraging us to put everything in the proper perspective and not only to share it with others, but the underlying message that Jesus is always give, also giving by talking about the fact that the man would die is to take nothing for granted. Cherish every moment, every blessing for oneself and for the benefit of others. Patrice Moore ended up in the ICU of St. Barnabas Hospital in New York City because all of the things that he had been hoarding in his city apartment avalanched down upon him, breaking bones and causing him to bleed. It would take the fireman two days to dig him out 50 industrial-sized garbage bags of books and magazines and all sorts of stuff that was just accumulating that avalanched upon him. Two days later, they were able to get him out and get him to the hospital. Then there's a story of a couple in San Francisco that were on the brink of divorce. 
because the husband had collected so much stuff that they couldn't get into bed at the same time. Now, maybe it's not that ridiculous in our lives, right? We laugh at stories like that. But the question raised is the appropriate one. Do we have proper perspective on the abundance of possessions that we seek to acquire in our lives as the people of God? A lot of times I see, and I know it's hard to make ends meet here on Long Island, but I see a lot of dual-income households that take as much overtime as they possibly can to accumulate as much money as possible, but in the meantime, precious time with loved ones, especially children, is lost, never to be gained again because so much time is spent laboring and working. And sometimes that question needs to be asked, which I think is one of the vices of us as Americans, that difference between wants and needs. Do I really need this now? Or is it just that I want it? And if you don't think it's an issue, ask yourself the question, why is there so much credit debt here in America? Because all too often we gotta have it here and now instead of waiting for it to come at the appropriate time and in the appropriate way. So Jesus raises the question. Raises the question about our perspective and our priority when it comes to our earthly possessions. And he concludes the story by talking about being rich toward God. What does this mean? Does this mean we can't have anything good, anything enjoyable? Does this mean we have to give everything to God so God gets richer in heaven? Does this mean we have to take a vow of poverty? Absolutely not. It's what St. Paul was getting out of the epistle lesson when he talked about understanding the distinction between the earthly things and the godly things, and putting everything in the proper place, understanding that who we are in Christ is a new creation, and we have all the possible blessings and riches that we really could need that surpass the limitations of the earthly things. And what it means for us to be rich towards God is knowing our identity, knowing who we are, baptized into Christ, that we have a rich treasure that goes beyond the limitations of this world. We are valued and loved so much by our Creator that even when we were broken by sin, He was willing to sacrifice everything to save us. That's how rich we are. And so being rich towards God, understanding that, changes our perspective. It appreciates everything that we have as a gift from God. It understands that when we're blessed in abundance, we share it with those who are less fortunate. It helps us to see blessings even in the little things in life. And it helps us to be good stewards, putting everything in its proper place, in its proper time, at its proper perspective. So that we're not slaves here and now just to acquiring more and more abundant possessions. But we are free through sacrifice, love, grace, and forgiveness. It's interesting how the world counts worth, right? It's what's in your savings account or your stock portfolio, or there's programs to determine what your net worth is that help with everything else financially. But the day will come when our loved ones are standing around our coffin. The question will be, will they be fighting over our possessions? Will they be dividing the family more over who gets what? Or will they be rejoicing in the times they share? Sharing stories of great love and family and fun and fellowship. See, by our baptisms into Christ, we've already hit the lottery. We are rich men and rich women. We have the greatest treasures of all. We have worth, value. We have an identity in Christ that lasts beyond this world. And so with that gift, with that blessing, with that understanding, everything else, especially our earthly riches and possessions, falls in its proper place. Just another tool to help God in his mission and help others make it through this life. Amen. Amen.